Ho! Now, with the previous consecutive videos being Bandai products, you lot want something different. And I only have one thing to say. Too bad, as we have another Bandai review. And this time around, it's not another illegal anime minor or a boomer mech, but what you've lot been waiting for. The SH Monsters Godzilla Evolve. Now, if you're familiar with the SH Monsters line, especially the Monsterverse line, they happen to receive the butt end of the roster as Bandai failed again and again to release a proper, screen accurate iteration of the legendary Goji or Monkey, even with the consecutive criticisms aimed at the initial mold that happened to age like milk which isn't helped by the fact that an emerging competitor that happened to achieve such feat and is further encroaching into Bandai's portion of the pie. And due to Bandai's life being on the line, they decide to do something no kaiju enthusiast could ever conceive of them doing. Replace the obsolete head with a screen accurate version. God damn it, those bastards finally did it! Look at the head, it's more or less a completely new sculpt as Bandai finally listened to the criticisms that plagued the original legendary Goji's head, especially with the up and starter that did a better job in their initial release. And when compared to the original, it's a definite upgrade as Yuji Sakai, or some other sculptor, and Bandai just like the real great Gundam 2.0 applied the same treatment, in which it abides the screen accuracy regarding the shape as depicted in the brows and and extra spikes the Evolved Godzilla received with the upgrade, as well as the improvements in paint quality regarding the eyes that with the 2019 release was Bruh! Bandai surely looked at the other molds and applied such quality standards to the Evolved Godzilla, making for a special Godzilla, then a SPECIAL Godzilla. And Bandai seems to have taken a clue from highest blueprint as the net forsake the anti-aircraft articulated neck sculpt, but instead pursue one that even when composed of multiple pieces maintains the organic aesthetic, which in my books was the better choice. But this is where the ass kissing ends. As after laying my hands and getting accustomed to the higher roster, the ailments that plague the Monstars line are ever more noticeable. The first of which is the absence of extra details such as the additional panel lining or added scales on the top of the head that were prevalent the higher is nowhere to be seen. Which when considering the price and the level of quality regarding the previous releases is a massive letdown and makes me wonder if Bandai actually rushed this figure ahead of schedule just to be high in the respective release. But maybe the biggest offender is the mouth as while well the innards, including the tongue, are well described. It is the teeth and the respective paint job that I have an issue with, as Bandai once again failed to learn from the past mistakes where the separated colors on both the teeth and gums were not applied, and instead Bandai chose the easy path where they bleached both pots with a single color scheme, resulting in a figure being less awe-inspiring and more toy-esque. But maybe that was the initial MO. But still unacceptable with the top tier quality of separation that was seen on Highest Godzilla. Then again, I am spoiled by Highest Rendition of the Big G. Moving down to the torso, it is evident that Godzilla decided to reduce on the bulk and go on a diet in which the once prominent belly fat is absent and in its place is some RIS. Definitely cut down on the carbs. This is not mentioning the enhancements in the chest as they happen to be more protrusive, all of which culminates in the big G being a giga chad and making the Camden monsters more akin to Eren Yeager. This is not mentioning the arms as they also received an upgrade as the increase in length and reach clearly makes this iteration of the big G more humanoid than the previous one and it's probably why he was able to do a suplex this time round. 
This is in addition to newly added spikes beneath the arms that may act as a close range daggers in a fight, but wasn't seen being used once. And hey! This time around, the claws are separately colored. Looking down to the legs, the Big G even with its drastic redesign that even though it's a slight downgrade from its previous iteration, still stuck to the franchise tradition of withholding those thick legs, which alongside the beautifully applied dry brushing makes it stomp over rival titans and is leagues ahead of those seen in any other anime waifu. This is not mentioning the feat that while more or less identical to his previous incarnation, Scott White, is ahead regarding paint job as the claws are not only separately colored, but applied with a dual color scheme that starts with an olive green paint job, but from the middle transforms into a semi-black color scheme that adds a layer of complexity that is hard to find in other Mozdots figures. And what is the king of the monsters without his most trusted melee weapon? In which the big G comes to a complete tail. God damn it! And the tail, just like his predecessors, is beautifully sculpted with the 22 separate pieces being organically attached to one another that allows the big G to conduct lethal takedowns seen on film, but also far exceeds the range found on his competitors. But what makes this tale more deadly than any other one seen in the franchise is in due to the tip possessing multiple sharp spikes that contrary to the streamlined design found in the original, acts similar to that of a mace as it can penetrate and clobber opposing hostiles from Zaku's two rival kaijus alike, but has never been seen being used once before. So go figure. But maybe Godzilla's most iconic trait is his dorsal place that has underwent an extensive evolution over the franchise's long lifespan, with each iteration retaining their individual design. And the evolved version of Godzilla is no different, as by absorbing the mass amounts of cosmic radiation and the DNA of a rival kaiju that underwent Kingdom Come, this iteration retains a much more sharp shape alongside the pink hue that not only symbolizes Godzilla's increase in strength, but also pays homage to a previous design. And Bandai seems to have put in the extra effort this time around, as rather than sloppily applying a metallic paint job on top of the dorsal plates, Bandai, similar to how they made clear parts for their Gunpla line, implemented such techniques to Godzilla's dorsal plates, in which the pink nature of the plates not only adds an extra dimension of riz to the big G, but when placed next to a source of light, fully shows off the magic of his translucent nature. But if you're either an adult that has an underwhelming job that requires you to put in the extra time for little pay, or raised in an Asian household, there are times when living itself is rough, in which Bandai seems to have listened to their customers' calls, where due to the sharp nature of the spikes, it allows the respective owners to Now, if you recall, with the surge in inflation and the associated prices of raw materials, many companies decide to cut costs by either cutting corners in the paint job department, or for the more common case, by reducing the number of accompanying accessories, with the Mozdogs being the poster child of such practices. In doing so, what the Evolved Goji is accompanied by is a singular pair of hands, and looking at the said accessory, they're more or less a pair of open hands that with the more vicious fingers and made for scratching claws, allow Godzilla to conduct the various poses that were pulled off by the King of the Monsters himself, or for shonen fans, to reenact Goku. But can he beat Goku? <laughs> As a kaiju figure, one is likely to misconceive the Monstars iteration of the Big G to stand over both man and machines alike. But such misconception is likely in due to the high toys line as the range of kaiju figures range into 20 centimeters, making them stand over both man and machines alike. But such is not the case for the Monstars line as they retain an average of 16 centimeters or 6.3 inches tall, making them a midget to your Hyatt Toys or Big and Mobile suits. Here's the SH Monstars Godzilla Evolve next to Gumpa, Figots, Figmas, and Gojira, Godzilla, 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 
Godzilla, Godzilla, Godzilla, and Hi Toys Godzilla. Now, for you kaiju junkies watching this video right now, kaiju figures are known for their outlandish range of movements, with them ending up almost as stiff as a rock or a movable statue at worst, with only a few humanoid kaijus to be exact being the exception. But out of the kaiju roster, the Monstars line, even with their ever more decrease in quality, retains the most amount of movements out of the kaiju roster, but that doesn't mean they're on terms with Figma level quality. With that said, let's see if Bandai's newest iteration of the Big G lifts up to the standards left off by their predecessors, or if it's a Nia statue as seen through the two previous Monstars seen on the channel. While the head can move down, the same cannot be said when looking up, due to the complete redo of the neck skull. But side to side movement is unprecedented. The jaws found on my model is stiff, in which, if you're a real man, I can easily force open the jaw. Jaw movement is difficult, even with the motion breaking chest line, torso movement is more or less non existent, while a shoulder spread is limited. The arms are extremely mobile, the elbows bend up to 90 degrees, barely. Run of the mill hand movement, leg spread is. God damn it! <laughs> extremely flexible leg movement, a roughly 90 degrees knee bend calf swivel, an unnatural level of feet movement that is only a rival with the previous real grade Gundam 2.0. And you can't talk about Godzilla without mentioning... Ugh! 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 This is what happens when you get older. Can't stand up, won't get hard, and easily loses momentum. So, regarding possibility, besides the malfunctioning tail, the Monstars line still boasts the joint prowess that the line is known for, and is leagues ahead of its competitors. At the current moment... So, what is there left to say? Bandai's latest iteration of the SH Monstars Godzilla Evolve is a special release as the company after facing the countless criticisms finally listened to their customers and actually put in the effort to improve on their previous skull. Such endeavors are explicitly shown through the completely redesigned head, increased imposability, the implementation of translucent parts, and the figure not crumbling upon opening the box. And such efforts would have made this figure an A+. If it was 2020, as with the super rookie Hyatt Toys entering the market and releasing the respective line that came with top tier quality, various kaijus, and at a relatively cheap price, it kind of makes this figure too little too late. This isn't helped with a joke of accessory that the Monstars was accompanied with, the awkward cracks and crevices that break the immersion, and the uneven size that doesn't fit well with its fellow Monstars line. With such predicaments off the table, I can only recommend this figure if you're a fan of the legendary evolved Godzilla and have disposable income to spare. In this economy. And please get the higher one as they delayed the release just to add an update on the design and an improved posability. With that said, I'm gonna give the SH Monsters Godzilla Evolved a ranking of a B minus.